Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Uh, we seem to be getting quite a few antenna questions uh, recently. Let's take a look at this one, which is from Danny K5STY. He says, hello, Dave. I enjoy watching your channel. Um, I apologize if this has been asked and answered. Well, we're, we're going to take a look at each one of these, even though they overlap uh, quite a bit. I'm about to install a Maxcom multi-band off-center fed dipole antenna, which is their OCF3K80. So I guess that means 80 meters and up. I'm going to be able to get it 35 to 45 feet in the air as an inverted V. That's a good height. Okay, do I have to aim the antenna in a particular direction, north, south, or east and west? Well, first of all, let's uh, zoom out here so that we get the whole whiteboard. Okay, if you, if you look, this is the free space... dipole pattern. If this is the dipole right here, let's say this is north and south, and then this is east and west, okay? You get a sharp null here, and you get most of your radiation going this way. This is for a dipole in free space. I don't know of a dipole in free space, except maybe on the uh, space station or on some satellite somewhere. Us poor earthlings have to uh, uh, put up with uh, uh, dipoles that are more real and that interact with ground. That perfect cardioid pattern uh, or double cardioid. Um, that's not a cardioid so much. Um, that pattern only works in free space. A real dipole pattern looks kind of like this. So there is radiation north and south. By the way, this happens to be vertically polarized. Just right off of that. This is uh, horizontal polarization here. This is more what a real dipole looks like. Now, let me make this not a straight dipole but an inverted V. An inverted V, of course from the top it looks the same. You know, it's in a straight line except these slope down and that slopes down. And your radiation pattern is sort of like that. It's actually so close to omnidirectional that it might as well be omnidirectional. Um, the reason is because you're bringing the ends down and they interact with the ground differently so you get propagation in that direction. Okay, um, so if you're going to put this in an inverted V, it really doesn't matter how you direct it. Now, if you want to get that last little half a dB um, of presence, it depends on where you live. Let's take just the United States. My wife got all the talent. As part of uh, our marriage vows, I gave her all my artistic talent, uh, which you can tell wasn't much. If you live here, most of your activity is going to be this way. So you would put your dipole north and south. If you live here, you're going to have activity this way, this way, uh, and this way over here to the corners. You probably want to put it east and west. But the, like I said, with an inverted V, the difference isn't much. Now keep in mind that a low dipole 35, 40 feet is great, but that's a half wavelength on 20 meters. But for 40 meters, it's not. For 80 meters, it's not. 
and for each band you're going to have a weird radiation pattern. But if now I'm looking down the end of the dipole, my vertical radiation looks like this, okay, over ground. The higher the dipole goes, the lower the lobe goes until you get up to one half lambda, okay, whatever the wavelength is. And then what happens is you get this still going down, but you get a lensing effect. This would be at one lambda. You get two lenses, and this is a very sharp null. So you won't transmit in that direction. Again, we're looking at a vertical cross-section here. You won't transmit in that direction. You won't hear anything in that direction. You'll hear here and here. But remember that this lobe is half the power of the lobe that it would be if you were at a half dipole. This is true both for verticals and um, horizontal antennas. If you can... Now, one of the problems you run into, of course, is a multiband dipole. So... If you are a quarter of a wavelength high on 40 meters, a quarter of a wavelength would be about 33 feet, you are half a wavelength high at 20 meters, and you are, let's see, quarter, half, and then you're full wavelength high at 10 meters. And so for each of those bands, you're going to get a different pattern, which is something to keep in mind. Okay, so um, I think that answers your question. Uh, inverted V is about the closest thing you can do to creating an omnidirectional um, uh, wire antenna, uh, horizontal, uh, horizontally polar polarized uh, antenna. Lots of people use inverted Vs to great success. So go ahead and do it. I do recommend that you keep the far end of the inverted V up at least eight feet so that people walking under the antenna don't guillotine themselves, okay? Um, around here we have deer. The deer tend to run at night and I had one destroy a, a good cobweb antenna by running right up the, the guy rope. But deer and so on can, can uh, hit these lower wires like that and uh, not only do damage to your antenna, but do damage to themselves, which the game warden will not like at all. So, if you... Um, take a break here. So, if you've watched this far, I'd like to ask you a favor uh, to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. This tells YouTube that uh, you think this is a channel worth sharing. Also click like and uh, that helps YouTube's algorithm. We've got to feed the algorithm, right? Um, also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you may do so by going to dcastler.com support and take a look at the myriad ways that you can do that. There might be one there that uh, you like. It could be um, a couple bucks in the tip jar. I mean, literally, that little, uh, it goes down to $1. Um, or you'd like to have a subscription, or you'd like to go to Patreon. Lots of different ways of doing things. I'd like to thank you very much for your support. Your support enables me to do things like purchase products uh, for review. Uh, also helps me fly. So, uh, thank you for your support, and until we next meet, 73.